Dear friends, grace and peace you from God and the Lord Jesus, born this day in Bethlehem. Amen. Now, yesterday was the last Sunday of the Advent season, and we started with Marietta, baby, my Lord. And now it's realized in the flesh. God is with us, Emmanuel. And I hope you're listening to those last words we were saying, because this is not just any birth. This is a very special birth that we're going to hear about. Because this birth was a gift to the world. You see, this is a time of gifts, isn't it? Now, it's a time when we, as Christians, celebrate that gift, that first gift, the birth of Jesus. And in ancient times, the birthday of this Christ child Jesus that we talk about, it just had to coincide with the Feast of Epiphany. Well, that doesn't happen until January 6th on our church calendar. But the reason why they did it back then, so many centuries ago, was that that was the day that they proclaimed the shining forth of God in human form. Just like the candles we have lit tonight, just like the candles we're going to have when we sing Silent Night, just like all of the Christmas lights you see, the Advent wreath, the regular candles in the altar area, as well as that light in the sky, the Star of Bethany. Now, this was Epiphany, believed to be the fulfillment of the Jewish festival of lights, which Jewish people still celebrate to this day on Hanukkah. But it all began with Christmas gifts. And I know tonight, some of you probably even opened up some of your Christmas gifts, or you're going to tonight. Or some of you, and don't blame me because it's your family, some of you are forced to wait until tomorrow. Now, maybe it's early in the morning, or maybe you're like my family used to be, but we had to wait until all the other relatives gathered at our house. But we waited and we waited, and finally, late in the afternoon, we could open up our Christmas gifts. But I know many of you are expecting certain Christmas gifts. Well, you have the Magi to thank. We just heard about that in What Child Is This? <coughs> it was the Magi, we often refer to them as wise men, who brought those precious gifts. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. Gifts fit for a king, but also fit for a king who was going to a cross on Good Friday. And then would be resurrected on Easter morning. But that's really where we get this idea about Christmas gifts, as far as giving them to each other. But think back to the original epiphany, that ending of the Christmas season that we now celebrate for 12 days. When the Magi arrived, they had gifts to give, but nobody else had gifts for them. So it really isn't like what we experience today, is it? I'm guessing tonight, tomorrow, Maybe some of you have already had your, some of your Christmases this past weekend. Maybe it's going to even go later in the next weekend. But you're probably going to exchange gifts. That first Christmas, it was just these three magi. Well, we actually don't know how many. Because the Bible doesn't tell us. It only tells us that there were three gifts. So let's just say that however many magi there were, they brought these three gifts. But nobody else had gifts for them. But that was the whole point. They didn't need a gift exchange because they realized the gift that they were looking at was that Christ child, that little child in a manger. That is the Christmas gift. But I know you're probably already drifting off thinking, yeah, but I'm thinking about my gifts I'm going to give tomorrow. Well, since you're drifting off anyway, just let your mind drift for a moment. Think of one of the best Christmas gifts you ever got as a child. Just go ahead. One time I'll let you wander during so just think about it. <laughs> you have that image in your mind? Now that's probably a good memory I'm hoping. A wonderful Christmas gift that you cherish. But now think about when you've given a gift for Christmas and you got this kind of cool reception. Oh. Yeah. Merry Christmas. What else do we have? Now, how did that make you feel? Probably quite the opposite, I would guess. Or how about yourself? Have you ever been the one to open up a gift and go, to 
food spots. <laughs> or you open up and you're expecting something, but you're getting something slightly different. And there's just a little bit of disappointment, but you don't want to show it. Or maybe it's a gift. So I did got the tube socks for many years. Thank you, Carl, for not giving me tube socks this year. <laughs> Where I looked and I thought, really? Tube socks again? Maybe you've had an experience about being disappointed in a Christmas gift. You were thinking you were probably going to open up one thing and it was something else. Or maybe you had experiences like me where there were years that you were thankful to get tube socks. <laughs> The disappointment was that there just wasn't enough really to go around for much more for great Christmas gifts. Consider what Christmas gifts are all about. And consider the different kind of Christmas gifts that have been given throughout the years. Centuries ago, food was considered an appropriate Christmas gift. And some of you probably still remember your Christmases where your gifts maybe consisted of like an orange or maybe a nice shiny apple or some fruit that you couldn't usually get in the winter time. Or in the Middle East. Originally there were Middle Eastern mince pies that were brought here by the Crusaders and soon became associated with Christmas. That was a gift. It was a Christmas gift because the pie was baked in the shape of a manger. And you bakers out there. I want to see if you're going to make one of the next year. But they baked them in the shape of a manger and there was a figure of Christ on top in the big figure. And the spicy pies symbolized those gifts of the Magi. And it was a challenge to people from England to eat 12 pies on the 12 nights of Christmas. Because the saying was, you will have as many happy months in a year as the mince pies you taste at Christmas time. I don't know about you, I've had mince pie. I'm glad I'm not part of that tradition. <laughs> that would be a disappointing one for me, like really. About maybe night nine of the Christmas season. Oh, mince pie again. Thanks. But you know, we think about our Christmas gifts in this country. There are a lot of different gifts in all the world. And a lot of different ways to do it. In many Western European countries, it started on December 5th. Because that night, kids put out their shoes and they filled them with drawings, carrots, cookies, a glass of milk, some places, a glass of beer, an offering set by the chimney for St. Nicholas, the blessed saint of our church. And then the next morning on December 6th, millions of children in Western Europe woke up to find presents overflowing from their shoes. That's a little different than our tradition, isn't it? Or is it? Because don't some of you hang stockings by the chimney for your Christmas stockings? And isn't there an expectation that by December 25th the stockings will be filled? In Costa Rica, it's the Noche Buena, the night of Christmas Eve. It is the Christ child who drops off gifts after the midnight mass. The children go to mass their parents, and then they arrive home to find their pesetre, their nativity scene, no longer empty, but occupied by baby Jesus, who's now in the, in the manger, and then they find that this baby Jesus has scattered presents under the tree. And if you're a child in Ecuador or Colombia, this Advent season you've been writing letters not to Santa, but to baby Jesus. Describe how good they would been and which presents they would like for Christmas. Christmas exchanges, Christmas gifts are fine and good. But at the heart of Christmas, it's really about giving away. And so tonight and tomorrow in much of Africa, Christmas is observed as a religious holiday, and the main focus is to attend church services. There really isn't a specific emphasis on Christmas presents. In fact, Zambians have a tradition of bringing gifts to church for the less fortunate and the hospitalized. They drop them off at church, but they don't have them at home. And in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, and Greenland, 
there, hospitals and nursing homes are the recipients of pepper cacao, those ginger snap cookies that are brought by St. Lucia. See, in those places, it isn't about what you get. It's really all about what you give. And that's really what tonight is all about as we prepare for Christmas morning. The gifts we get are fine, but Christmas is really about the gift. And when it comes to gift giving, it's all about Jesus. And when you listen to Jesus through the Gospels, you find out that Jesus is all about you and me giving away the gift, the gift of love, of God's love and grace, sharing the gifts of repentance and forgiveness so that we can be reconciled to one another and to God. It's about giving of ourselves and giving to those in great need, even before we give to those around us who have. See, it's so much more than the usual exchange of Christmas gifts between family and friends. It's about giving of our all to God's children who have nothing. And so we celebrate this gift of Christmas, this gift by loving our neighbors. For when we love and care for others, not just those near and dear to our hearts, then we are reassuring Christmas gift. Tonight is about the real gift of Christmas. And it's about all 12 days of the season that we remember it's about God's gift to us. Jesus, the Messiah, the long-awaited Christ. So let us remember tonight that the gifts we exchange will wear out over time. Some will quickly be forgotten. But Jesus, he is the gift that lasts a lifetime. His message of love and hope is the Prince of Peace. His gift is the gift that keeps on giving beyond Christmas. This is the Jesus who begins in a major Christmas, but continues through Easter. That's the gift that never disappoints, because that's the gift we find come Easter morning that lasts for all eternity. And hopefully, this brief video, I can get to work here, will sum it up. Ow. 
paid in full. That's the gift offered to all. It costs us nothing. You, everything. It lasts just a bit longer than eight seconds, eight days, eight weeks, or even eight months. It lasts forever. Merry Christmas to all. As we sing Angels We've Heard On High. 